Each nephron, which is the filtering unit of the kidney, has one juxtaglomerular complex, or also called juxtaglomerular apparatus. This is specifically located at the distal end of the ascending limb, so where it starts to um, ascend up in a superior direction. And it's the specific point where it comes in contact with the afferent, or sometimes the efferent arterial. Now the purpose of the juxtaglomerular apparatus is that it helps to regulate the rate of filtrate formation and blood pressure. And the specific cells that are found within this juxtaglomerular complex are a group of cells called the macula densa. These are tall, closely packed cells of the ascending limb and also sometimes the descending limb. And their job is that they sense salt of the filtrate. Then there's also granular cells, which are also called juxtaglomerular, or simply JG cells. And these are smooth muscle cells of the arteriole, and they act as mechanoreceptors that sense blood pressure. And they have granules that contain the chemical renin, which can trigger the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So in addition to these two cells, the third cell in this group is called the extra glomerular mesangial cell. And we can see that located right here. So extra meaning it's outside and it's between the arterial and the tubule cells and it's connected with gap junctions. So it allows for signals to pass very quickly from the macula densa to the granular cells as well. So the function of the kidney now is of course to filter urine and within a 24 hour period there are about 180 liters of fluid that is processed per day. And of that 180 liters, 1.5 liters is what we actually get rid of, we actually urinate out. So that means the remaining, remaining amount, the some 178.5 liters, returns into the blood. And if that didn't happen, we would not survive very long. So that's hugely important. So the three processes specifically that are involved in urine formation are glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion. So it's important that you know what these three processes are and where they're located at. So this slide does a real nice job of showing what exactly happens in each of these three cases. So number one is glomerular filtration. That's the event that happens right at the glomerulus where there's high blood pressure that pushes, it's the force responsible for pushing fluid from the blood vessels into the capsular space where the glomerular capsule is. Then the next two processes, tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion, the reabsorption means that it returns into the paratubular capillary so it goes back into the bloodstream. And the secretion is what we want to get rid of out of our body. It ends up going into what will eventually become the urine. So the first process, glomerular filtration, it's a passive process. And as you know, that means that no energy is actually used. And so in this case, what happens is... It's, there's hydrostatic pressure that forces the fluids and the solutes through the filtration membrane. So um, this is where most everything leaves the blood except for what doesn't fit through those pores, which are red blood cells and proteins. So the filtration membrane looks somewhat like this. And the filtration membrane, it's where there's the Bowman's capsule space and the Bowman's capsule space is also called the glomerular capsular space. And 
again, what goes through into the proximal convoluted tubule, everything that goes into it is via filtration. And it goes through this membrane that we see enlarged on the right. It has to fit through these large holes or pores called fenestrations. And so everything goes through but the pro plasma proteins, red blood cells and white blood cells. That, in fact, that's one sign of an infection if white blood cells are found in the urine. They're not supposed to go through. This slide is just showing us a little more in depth of the layers of the filtration membrane. And we can see those shown a little better on the right side of this diagram. The fil filtration membrane, it separates the blood in the glomerular capillaries from the filtrate in the capsule itself. And it contains the capillary endothelium, a basement membrane, and then there's also these foot processes of the podocytes of the glomerular capsule. So anything that fits through, gets through the filtration membrane, ends up going into the proximal convoluted tubule. So the filtration membrane, the three important layers of it are shown on this sl slide. The fenestrated endothelium, the basement membrane, and then those foot processes. And the force that pushes outward is this force of filtration. And it's a hydrostatic force, which we know means water. And specifically, um, that hydrostatic pressure is very, very high. And it's, it's unusual for a capillary to have a pressure really, really high because it can damage those thin endothelial cells. And in fact, this example, the blood pressure is about 55 millimeters of mercury, which is about twice what it normally would be in other capillary beds. And just like we learned, like you've learned in the cardiovascular system, there's also other pressures that are responsible that are kind of pushing in the opposite direction. So, so the main outward pressure is the hydrostatic pressure, the blood pressure, and the inward pressures there would also be a hydrostatic pressure, but it's, it's very minimal and it would be in the capsular space. And there's also a pressure that's due to the particles, the osmotic pressure. Remember, this is the pressure that sol uh, solutes are going to generate to kind of pull fluid in a certain direction. So this is the pull of proteins that are in the blood. So the net result of all these pressures is called the net filtration pressure, the sum of the forces. And this means because we have 55 for the outward pressure, 45 for the inward pressure, the net outward force is about 10 millimeters of mercury. And that pressure is responsible for the filtrate formation which is referred to as the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. So if a kidney is working properly, if the nephron is healthy, the glomerular filtration rate should be about 10 millimeters of mercury. So again, the forces that determine this, we can see really well on this diagram. We see the 55 as the outward pressure. The inward pressure is an osmotic pressure because there are proteins that are in the blood that pulls blood that pulls fluid in the opposite direction so that would be 30 and then finally the hydrostatic pressure is very small but it's an inward so that means there's a net filtration pressure of 10 millimeters of mercury and that's what's responsible for determining the net filtration pressure